Hi there, friends. Welcome back. For those of you that are coming back for the second part of the chicken rub Easter feast that we are going through, looking for how to do some stuff in the crock pot or the, the slow cooker um, for your Easter meals, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to go through a couple of side dishes here and I have a little bit of a surprise guest for you guys later. Um, hope you guys enjoy and I hope you find it helpful. So let's uh, dive in. Okay, so first things first, whenever I'm prepping anything to go into the slow cooker or uh, the instant pot, I always like to add a little bit of substance, something for the protein portion to sit on. Uh, for those of you that have watched the proper knife handling video that I put up a while ago, um, you'll be familiar with some of these basic skills. If you haven't yet, I recommend just going and having a quick look for a refresher if you feel like your knife handling could use some work. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is I like to take my onion. Now you can use white, red onion, or whatever vegetable substitutes you really want. I like the white onion because it cooks up really nice. It's not too powerful, um, but it gives a nice fluidity um, when you're cooking up your chicken. So just like before, you're gonna top off both ends. Right Now, the thing I, I normally do is I would normally cut it in half, but for this one, we're just gonna, because we want nice round circles, you're just gonna take the outside edge off and make sure you're left with a nice clean onion. Um, I mean, if you have to get a little handsy with it, not the end of the world. You're just gonna wanna make sure that you've got a nice white exterior shell. Now, this is if this is the point where most people start crying, one of the things you can do um, you can wear goggles, I know it sounds funny, but um, if you're super sensitive to stuff like that, the onions do smell, um, I won't think any less of you. So now that you've got your onion peeled, you're gonna turn it on its side. You're gonna make nice, even, thin cuts, okay? You don't need them too thick, you're just basically trying to cut the bottom. If you feel like it's a little too thin, that's okay. Again, this isn't the, the huge part of the meal that's most important. This is just to add a little substance and flavor. And you, you really just wanna make sure you cut enough to coat the bottom of whatever pan, crock pot, instant cooker that you're using so you can lay them out flat. So what you see here is once again, I've got my station set up. On the left there, I've got the inside of the instant pot I'm gonna be using and the onions I just chopped up for you. So what you'll see is the inside here, all we're gonna do, we're just gonna lay the onions nice and flat along the bottom. Doesn't have to be absolutely flush. You just want them on the bottom, providing a nice little kind of bed for your meat and your chicken and whatever you're cooking in the slow cooker to kind of just absorb all of that. So. Those are the onions that go in on the bottom. Moving on. Now for this next part, folk, we're gonna add a little carrot. So the carrots you can find, again, at Sobeys, just your typical long run-of-the-mill carrot. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure you have a peeler. You can do it with a knife. Um, just go very, very carefully, uh, unless you're a pro. Um, now the key here is to go along the length of the vegetable and you should pull off nice, long strands like that. Um, if you come up against any rough edges or anything like that, um, you can always cut it into smaller pieces if you've got a weird shaped carrot or something like that. Um, you can always cut it into more manageable pieces and then you switch it around to take the top part. And as you can see, very easy to do, very, very quick to do. All right, so once you've got your carrots all peeled, You'll see I'm just using three here, medium-sized carrots. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take the top portion off. And I usually take the bottom portion off just to be sure I've got everything cleaned. Now you'll notice here, this one's a little weird shaped. So what I might do is I might just cut that in half. And then just like before, you're gonna work on your knife handling. You're gonna put your three fingers up and you're just gonna go ever so lightly with a rough chop there making nice little roundels. Now you'll see here, they're all, they look kind of like coins. You can just pick those up 
and place them willy-nilly in the Instant Pot. So now that you've got all that chopped up, it should just look like this at the bottom of your Instant Pot or your crock pot. You'll see that the whole surface is kind of just covered in the vegetables. This allows the chicken to sit on that bed. You don't burn the bottom. Um, but all those aromatics and all of those vegetables cook off at the same time uh, and it makes a really beautiful finished product. Now, what you're going to do next is you're going to come over here and you can see this kind of rack thing. Um, if you have an Instant Pot or a bottom for your crock pot, that's kind of what you want to do. The chicken will sit just on that and it's just so um, it doesn't get stuck to anything. Um, so you put that in right over the vegetables there. So now that you've got that all set up, your wire rack is in, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add just a little bit of water um, just to coat the bottom and make sure that there's some moisture in there so as it cooks off. And I mean, use your best judgment. You know how big your, your crock pot or your, your instant pot is. So I've added about, about three quarters of a cup just, just to make sure that there's enough there so that I don't burn any of the carrots or the onions to the bottom and gives them ample moisture to cook through with the chicken. Next what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come over here to your big chicken and you're going to just want to pick him up and place him ever so gently inside your Instant Pot. So as you can see you've got a nice bed of vegetables and your chicken nicely seasoned on top. So now that the chicken's in the Instant Pot all you're going to do you're going to put the lid on it you're going to leave it to cook for about 35 minutes. Um, use the instructions that come with the piece of equipment you're using. If you're using a slow cooker, just keep an eye on it. Um, do not baste the chicken, so don't take any of the juices and run them over the top. Um, what you'll end up doing is washing down um, all of the dry rub off the chicken, and you'll have some parts that are seasoned very well and others that are not. Um, as the carrots and the onions at the bottom cook up, the aromatics and all of that will mix and you should end up with a fantastic chicken. Um, if you're looking for sides and things to go with that, um, check out some of my other videos. Um, one we'll be doing shortly is Tegan's Garlic Bacon Mashed Potatoes, um, so stay tuned for that. Um, I'll show you what that looks like finished in just a couple moments here. Alrighty folks, so it's been about 35 minutes here in the Instant Pot. Um, it's been pressure cooked, so I'm just gonna take the lid off here. And you'll see there that most of it's cooked just beautifully. A couple of the vegetables have been steamed and that water I put in there um, just really helped kind of soften those up. So there's your rotisserie chicken, all done, ready to go. Now I always like to cut into it just to make sure it's done, but you can see all the way down there that it's nice and cooked through. Um, you can drain a little bit of the water, serve the vegetables, um, they'll air out perfectly. And that my friends is the barbecue chicken rub for your Easter meal. I hope you guys enjoy, and if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Happy Easter guys, take care.